I featured this very dinky thing in a recent unbagging of AliExpress stuff. Let me zoom down so you can actually see it because it's very, very small. It's a little flashlight with a protective cover. I think that can be also used as a diffuser, but it plugs straight into the USB port of your phone. And you might think, well, why would you do that? Your phone already has a flashlight. Well, your phone flashlight might need the phone to be active to actually power it. I'm not sure how the current draw goes. Whereas if you plug this into the USB-C port of your phone, then it can potentially just power it on demand and without waking your phone up. But anyway, when I first tried this, listen, watch what happens to the phone. Listen carefully. Did you hear it go? Doodle. And it registered that something had been plugged in. And at that point, you can then just use it as a flashlight because it is putting power out to power whatever it could be. You're trying to charge something from your phone because the USB-C port can effectively do that. And that noise just made me slightly paranoid initially until I plugged in a dumb circuit uh, with just the two 5.1K resistors and it also made the same noise. So I don't think there's anything in here, but there's only one way to find out. We're going to have to open it. So let's try that right now. I think this might be destructive. I don't know if it's glued or if it's uh, just screw fit together. It looks as though... It's got a wee bung in this end. So let's get the side cutters or pliers. Uh, where's, the, where's a good beefy set of pliers? Here's a beefy set of pliers. Let's grip that. Oh, that just caved in and went squishy. I think I'm about to destroy this, aren't I? Well, you know what happens. Let me destroy mine so you don't have to destroy yours. Oh, this is going to be toast by the time finished. Oh, I think I've just pulled the fucking USB connector off. Bah! Uh, this isn't going well. Hold on. And I can't back out now, even though I may have just slightly dropped the F word there. This is not going well. This is going terribly. Right. I think this is just going to be a prolonged destruction here. That's kind of coming out. Have I broken the sucker board and everything in here? Oh, no, that doesn't want to come out. Why doesn't it want to come out? Is it the button that's in the way? What if I pull the button out? Sometimes with these things... You can just basically drag the silicone button out. Right, tell you what, I've pretty much destroyed this, haven't I? Let's get a pair of side cutters and just grip that button. <laughs> yeah, they were very sharp, yeah. This is toast. That's fine. Let me take mine apart so you don't have to take yours apart, etc. This has gone terribly. You're literally seeing me destroy this product. Uh, I think that little silicon thing that is... Hold on. Let me just shove it down randomly with a screwdriver. Oh, there we go. It was the, the silicon thing that was like... Came from coming out. There's the LED. There's the circuitry in the back. Okay. Well, you know what happens now? I shall take a picture of this circuitry because it's very, very tiny. And we can explore it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete, and that took quite a while. It was very hard to reverse engineer for two reasons. Firstly, it's using quite an odd choice of components and quite a lot of them. And also, this is the little circuit board here that's scaled up to this size. You can see there is a lot of components, and uh, the solder connection points are so small that probing it took a long time, particularly because I was having to trace weird circuitry out. But things were there of note. You look at this circuit board and you tend to think, oh, this is one of these dedicated flashlight control chips. Could even be a microcontroller. But it's not. It's a 4054 lithium charge control chip. In this instance, it's being used in conjunction with this diode and a current setting resistor to drive the LED with fixed current. We have an A1SHB, which is the P-channel equivalent of the common N-channel A2SHB, and it's a MOSFET, very capable MOSFET, and it's switching the power to the current regulation circuitry for the LED. And then we have a J6, which is a standard NPN transistor, and it's using uh, a lot of components and this transistor to actually create the toggle effect. So you can switch it on and off by pushing the button. Um, the only thing that's signaling to the USB that it is plugged into a load is there's one 5.1K resistor down here connected to the other side of the USB connector. And one side, one of the pins appeared to be grounded. Not sure about that. Very hard to probe. Especially, I ended up pulling the connector off it to actually probe it in the end. 
Very difficult. But anyway, let's go straight to the schematic, which contains more information. Here is the schematic, so let's explore. So there's the USB's connector, C connector, and I've shown just the 5.1K resistor going up to one of those pins for that. Um, then we've got this P-channel MOSFET, the A1SHB, which is switching power to the LED current regulator. Now, this is a 4054 type uh, lithium cell charger. And all they're doing here is they're using it with a current set resistor that would normally char set the charge current for the lithium cell. They're using it to limit the current through the LED. But note that there's a Schottky diode in the series. And the reason for that is that the 4054 and similar chips, if they detect the lithium cell voltage is too low, like say below 3 volts, which the LED is potentially going to be below 3 volts, then they'll put out a much lower current, about a tenth of the normal charge current, just to trickle it back up to the full, to the point it can charge it, as soon as it reaches 3 volts, to the point it can charge it at full current. So because the LED may actually just be slightly below 3 volts, they've added the shot diode purely as a voltage packer, just to raise that up to the point the 4054 thinks it's charging a lithium cell and puts the full current out. It has a couple of capacitors, not sure the value. Everything, I had to measure everything in circuit and uh, only a few components could be measured accurately because they were only connected at one end. Say for instance, while it was unplugged, this 5.1K resistor, I could measure that, but the other ones, because there's no markings and because I was probing about uh, on the circuit board with the components in circuit, I couldn't get reliable resistor and capacitor readings. So um, all these ones show roughly 700 nano. That could be 680 nanofarad. It could be one microfarad. And uh, this one across the whole circuit showed 6 microfarad. That could be 5.6. It could be 6.8. It could be 10 microfarad. It's just a rough value. Um, so... Here's how, how the circuitry works, because the toggling is based on the power switching transistor and this NPN transistor. It's very clever. So initially, when you power it up, the uh, voltage here, which it controls this transistor, which turns that transistor on, is pretty much zero, because this capacitor is fully discharged at that point, because it's just passive discharging through the load here. And uh, as a result of that, you power it up, and uh, the circuitry's off, and uh, this is at a sort of low voltage, and that because that is at low voltage, the, it normally actually also helps hold this transistor on. And it, because it's low, the transistor is off and it stays in the off state. But at the same time, current flows through this resistor, and this resistor and charges this capacitor slowly up to roughly five volts. When you push this button, it dumps that capacitor without any current limiting into the base of this transistor. And that briefly turns the transistor on, which shunts. It goes to zero volts. And uh, then that pulls this, uh, res this uh, gate low and it turns this MOSFET on. And that then pulls this connection up to positive, which then powers the circuitry. But it also, as well as when this goes positive, it, which was basically finding a path to zero volts before, uh, it is now positive. And now, through this divider, it actually holds this transistor on, and that's what latches the circuit on. But at the same time, because this is now on, and it's pulling this uh, gate of this MOSFET low to turn that on, this connection here now goes to zero volts, and this capacitor here now discharges through this resistor slowly to zero volts. And next time you press, press the button after a slight delay, because this is now at zero volts, when you press the button, it effectively shunts the base of this transistor to the zero volt rail. It turns off. Um, uh, this MOSFET is then turned off as well. And uh, that turns the lighting off. But it also, because this is now zero volts, uh, this is turned off, this uh, is then pulled back up and the cycle begins again. So it's a very simple toggle on-off effect with one button based purely in the charging and discharging of this capacitor depending on the state um, and the, uh, the feedback to that transistor to hold it in an on or off state. It's very clever. Complicated circuitry. It took quite a while to trace that through. Lots of colouring on the circuit board to actually try and work out which components were associated with which function. But there we have it.
It's it's harmless. It's not a rubber ducky, which is the main thing. It's a useful little thing. It does project a beam, unlike your phone's uh, LED flashlight, which projects a splash of light. Uh, plugging this in projects a more directable beam. And it's kind of convenient because it's easier to hold the phone kind of flat than it is to holding it up. It uh, also potentially has higher, uh, lower quiescent current draw on the phone while it's uh, just powering this small dongle. It's worth mentioning the LED has a little reflective sticker around it and a strange lens with a little bubble in the middle uh, to control the light output. But there we have it. It's a cheap little thing. It works. It's not going to put malware onto your phone. And uh, it's got very unusual circuitry. We can take some inspiration from the... Uh, the driving of the LED with this as a current regulator with thermal over prote overheating protection as well, effectively. And the fact you can program the, use that resistor to program the current of the LED. And the, the, it's nice to see that they've used that little short key to cheat the voltage up a bit to use it for that. And this toggle circuit, quite unusual. I've come across it before, but it is kind of rare, uh, particularly in this day of microcontrollers. But there we have it. It's a neat little device.